everybody and welcome back to this tutorial where we will code our FTP brute forcer. So let us first of all think what we need to do in order to do that. Now it is very simple, it is very similar to the SSH brute forcer. All we need to do is specify a, a list of passwords or basically our password list file which we will use the same one as we used in the in the SSH brute forcer. So we'll use this uh, same passwords.txt file, so if you don't have it, make sure to create it. Let me just nano it so you can see which passwords are here. So we have the some random passwords, which is for example admin123, password and so on, and the correct password, password which is MSF admin. Now then all we want to do is use the FTP lib library in order to perform the connection with a certain username and a certain password. Now in order to make this even better, we can try to actually uh, brute force with both of the usernames and both of the passwords. Now what I mean by that is we will not prompt the user to actually specify a username or password for that account, for that FTP account. We will actually make a passwords.txt file which will contain both users and both passwords separated by two dots. Now this is a very common password file so you can find bunch of password lists like this online that contain both user and password separated by two dots. It looks something like this. So admin two dots administrator. Then we can use some numbers. We can add right here password password. We can add right here root password. Here we will add root as well as msf admin and after that we will add msf admin msf admin which is the correct username and the correct password and here we will have world hello hello world now let me explain this once again this is the username and this is the password this is how we will actually import the file and we will watch the first part uh, what we will do is first of all we will read the first line of the file which will be all of this then we will split that line uh, uh, where the two dots are and then we'll use the left side of that line as a username and the right side of that line as a password. So that is the basic idea behind our brute forcer. So let us save this password file. Let us nano ftp brute.py. First of all use the user share or pardon me user bin python line and import the FTP lib library. So this is all good. Right now, all we want to add, prompt the user for is the host IP address. So we can do that with simply just typing right here host equals and then let's use raw underscore input enter targets IP address. So we prompt the user for this and this is everything that user needs to specify. Let's put it as a star so we decorate it a little bit. And all we want to do right now, uh, well actually we need to prompt it for one more thing which is the password list file. So they can actually specify that too. If they don't want to use the one right here, we can prompt that to actually specify the path to the passwords.txt file. So passwd file, let's call it like that, equals raw underscore input. enter passwords file or let's specify the username and passwords file so user slash password file and path so they know that they need to specify the entire path since if the passwords.txt file is not in our current directory they will need to specify a full path to that file in order for our program to be able to find it so once we prompt the users this, all we want to do is run the brute login with the uh, arguments as host and the passwd file. Now this brute login uh, function doesn't really exist. We will code it right now. Uh, as I said, all we want to do is use the FTP lib to connect and to send the username and passwords. And we want to open the password file and read lines and split the users by the uh, two dots, so everything on the left will be users and everything on the right will be passwords. Now let's see how we can do that. First of all, let us make our brute login function. Let's call it the same, otherwise this will not work. 
it takes the input of a host name and it takes the input of a passwd file. So password file and the host name. We specify the two dots right here. And right now, first of all, let us actually open the file that we asked user for, so we can actually open it. Or we can just type here try to open it. So if the user specifies the wrong file, we will prompt them with the uh, error that that file doesn't exist. So try to, let's make it pf. So this is the variable for our file. Let's open it with the uh, argument passwd file, since that is the variable that we specified right here. And we also sent it to our root login function. And we want to open that file for reading. So let me just put here a comma instead of the dot. We want to read from that file. So we try to open it, except print, we want to print file doesn't exist. So all we have to do after this is actually perform the same for loop that we did in our SSH uh, brute force login. So all we want to do is for each line in our pf file dot read lines. So for every line that we read from that file, we want to split it by the two dots. So the username, we can call it like this. The username will be everything as I said from the left side. So how we can do that, we can use line dot split. And in the brackets, we need to specify where we want to split it. And we want to split it by two dots, as we saw in the passwords.txt file. And in order to specify that the username should be everything on the left, we can just add in the square brackets zero right here. This basically means uh, that once the line is split, it will make a list of actually all the components that are uh, in that line split by two dots. And the first component will be the component from the left, which is uh, labeled as zero, since in Python, as we said, the counting starts from zero. The component on the right, which will be the second and the last component, will be the password, which will be labeled as one. So we can do that with simply just typing right here, password equals line dot split. Split, we want to split it by the same path uh, part, so we split it by the two dots. And we take the second argument, which is the everything on the right. So this is how it should be. And let us print that we are now trying to uh, brute force with this username and password. So print Let us use Python 3 since I'm not really sure how this will work with Python 2. So just change everything to be for Python 3. Not really sure how this path right here since sometimes this split can either work or not depending on the Python. At least I had some problem before with it. But let us just uh, make this a Python 3 program. So just remove the raw underscore input and just type here input as same as here. And all the print statements just put inside the brackets. So simple as that. And what we want to print right here is basically just trying. And then let's add the username plus let's split it by the slash and let's add the password. So password. So what this will print is basically something like this. Trying admin admin so it should print something like this so let us see what else we need to code all we want to do is actually code the actual logging in right now so we can try that so try to log in we will set the ftp variable to ftp lib.ftp from our host name which is the host ip address so host name and right now our login variable will actually perform the login itself. So FTP login on the username and password. So we close the brackets right here. And in case this works, we want to print that we found the password. So print, we add plus. 
login succeeded with and let's add the username plus slash plus password. We close the brackets, we add a space right here, so our program actually doesn't get the error. And we actually want to quit the FTP session right after this, so ftp.quit, we can do it with this. And all we want to do is return from our function, we want to return the username and the password. In case we actually want to use it for some future uh, attacks but right now all we want to do is code a good function so right now all we are left to specify is actually what happens if it fails so except we only want to actually pass since we don't want to waste the memory and the time for our program we don't want to execute any code right after that all we want to do is actually let me just double check all of this so we split the line we print trying this we perform the connection and in case the login works we print that login succeeded with this username and password actually this right here we do not need so let's just remove it for now on let's see right here uh, all we have to add right now is in case everything right here finishes we want to print for example if it doesn't find the password and it actually uh, went through the entire list we want to actually print right here print so let us add the double quotes password not in list so that we know that there is not password that actually can be uh, used in order to log into that FTP in this passwords list so let me just double check this once again or let us just try to run it and see if it works it probably won't we'll probably have to change some of the things so let's first of all run it with python 3 since that is the python that we used in order to make it we enter the target's ip address 192.168.1.66 and we press enter enter the user password file path in uh, right now since our user pass file path is the actual same directory we only need to do is to specify the name itself and let's see try and get admin admin password not in list we can see that it didn't find the password password not in the list but let me just see why does it print this after every every try so let's see what we can do with that as we can see, we have the same problem as in our SSH brute forcer that we have the empty space right here. And another problem that we have is this line right here, which is printed out every time we actually try to brute force with a certain username and password. So let us nano FTP brute this line right here. We actually want to tab out. That is the reason we actually want to tab it one line out since it is actually belonging if we tab it in it will belong to this for loop and it will print it every time so we fix that just by tabbing it out and in order to actually remove the new line we, all we want to do is just type here dot strip from the new line character oops so let me just find this so here it is So right now, if we run it once again, let's see what will happen right now. 182.168.1.6 passwords.txt. Try again admin administrator, trying 123123 admin. So let's see if it will manage to find it. Trying root password, 123. Trying root MSF admin, so the next one. And we can see it actually did work, login succeeded with msf admin msf admin and we get the password not in list so let us actually edit a little bit this more so we don't want to actually prompt the users with this if we find the password since this can be really confusing if you actually uh, find, uh, use a big file and it actually manages to find the password uh, we don't actually want to prompt the users at the end that the password is not in list so let us see how we can do that 
we can do that by simply exiting the program right after we right after we uh, find the password. So let us see right now if it will work. So 192.168.1.6 password.txt it will try to brute force and right now let's see it should actually quit the program right after we find the password. Now this is going a little bit slow but better something than nothing so here it is but it still tries to actually go further on not really sure why let us see how this will work so let me just check this out right here not really sure why this didn't work Maybe if we actually instead return from the function, so let us return the username and password. So if we return, it shouldn't actually print anything afterwards. So let us try once again. Passwords.txt. Let's let this run. The next password should be the password for our account. And we can see right now if we use the return, it actually returns from the function so it doesn't actually per, uh, continue doing it and we actually get printed login succeeded with msf, ad, MSF admin slash msf admin. So we successfully coded our brute forcer, it does work, we can see that we can actually brute force the passwords with our passwords.txt. It separates the list of our passwords for the username and for the password. And that would be about it for this tutorial and for this attack on FTP. Hope you enjoyed it. And in the next section, what we will do is we will actually try to code some of the tools used for password cracking. Now, for example, if you get a hashed password from anywhere, from a website, a SQL database, from a target system or basically anywhere else, we can see how we can actually run the attack in order to decrypt that password and in order to crack it. So that would be about it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!